And Pelt with the play action. Drills it deep over the middle, has it complete to Askew, and he will score. So the Big East Football Conference in its debut year could not have asked for a better game. It was a new conference, but it relied upon one of the oldest rivalries in college football, which was Pitt in West Virginia. And the Mountaineers and Panthers opened up that 1991 season against each other in a prime time game on Saturday night. The signature play, I think the play that everybody will always remember from that game, was Sean Gilbert. Picked the ball off at the line of scrimmage. That one is intercepted by Gilbert. He took it 26 yards for a touchdown, which really kind of broke the back and the spirit of the Mountaineers. But for my money, 1997 is one of the most exciting football seasons ever at Pitt, certainly during the Big East era. Pitt hadn't been to a bowl game in eight years. The last game of the year, backyard brawl in Morgantown with a 5-5 five and five record. They needed to win this game to extend their season. It ultimately was a seesaw affair, of course ending in three overtimes, and the play, the iconic moment from what was an iconic game was 4th and 17. Pete Gonzalez to Jake Hofert, which set up the winning touchdown. Pete under center. He's back on 4th and 17. He looks. He steps up. He fires a pass. It's caught for the first pass oh, oh, oh. at the 12-yard line. Second and 10 from the 12. Pete is back. He looks. He throws for the goal line. It's touchdown. caught for the touchdown. touchdown. Game over. Yeah. Game over. It is Pete Gonzalez to Terry Murphy. And the Panthers have defeated the West Virginia Mountaineers in triple overtime. Pitt's time in the Big East Conference if you look at over the two decade period that they played in the league, you know, it really kind of showed a natural evolution of the program. They started out, they were playing in Pitt Stadium. As the program grew, so did the facility, so did the opportunities, moved out of Pitt Stadium in style, beating Notre Dame in the last game. And the crowd is on the field and they're going after the goal post with nine seconds left. And I think we've just seen the end of Pitt Stadium's illustrious history. It's Pitt State versus Pittsburgh. Green River Stadium, homecoming day for the Pittsburgh Panthers. And moving into Three River Stadium for one season in 2000, which was a very successful season at that point in time. Went seven and four, uh, beat Penn State, beat West Virginia, went on to the Insight Bowl, and then the new decade debuting Heinz Field, which is where some of the very best Pitt Big East Conference games were played over the last decade. Billy, today's attendance here at Heinz Field, 66,207, and they've seen an unbelievable ball game, and it's coming down to the wire. One of the very, very best would be Pitt and Virginia Tech. Two top 20 teams, high stakes, Saturday night prime time, a back and forth game that of course quite famously ended with Lusaka Polite pulling over from the two to get the winning touchdown. And he gives it to Polite, and Polite has stood up and he gets down to the goal line. And is it in? Is it in? Yes! It is! Yes! It is! Yes! Touchdown, Lusaka Polite! And the Panthers are back on top with 47 ticks on the clock. Everybody always remembers December 1st, 2007. We're getting ready for the 100th backyard brawl. Let's, Let's go! go! This is Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. With the intensity of this rivalry and what's at stake, somebody's going to stage quite a celebration tonight. That was the day that Pitt upset West Virginia 13-9. Of course, the Mountaineers were on the precipice of the national title game. That is a day that probably, I don't know if they'd admit it or not, the Big East wasn't too happy with the Panthers. A very big caravan of representatives came down to Morgantown assuming that they were going to coronate the Mountaineers who were going to get into the national title game. Well, obviously it didn't work out that way. Quarterback keeper, Boston. Touchdown! You know, when you look over the Big East record books, I believe that nobody has cornered the market on great wide receiver talent like the University of Pittsburgh. Of course, everybody remembers Larry Fitzgerald. Fade for Fitzgerald. Oh, he caught oh. it, of course. People will always remember Antonio Bryant 
All-American Bolitnikoff Award winner. But there were some great receivers in addition to those two guys. You know, Dietrich Gels, who played during the early 1990s, was the first thousand yard receiver in pit history. And if you look in the Big East record books, you know, his 3,000 yards receiving still rank very, very highly in the conference annals. Pitt certainly has its fair share of great running backs, and there are two guys when you think about our best running backs, Curtis Martin and LaShawn McCoy. Um, not only are they pit greats, not only you've got one guy in the Hall of Fame and you've got LaShawn McCoy who's enjoying an all-pro career right now, but when you look at the history of great tailbacks in the Big East Conference, and they do have a great history of tailbacks, LaShawn and Curtis are two guys who are certainly going to be mentioned at the top of that list. You can watch National Football League games today on Sunday, and it's almost like a who's who, not only of pit talent, but some of the very best Big East football players over the last two decades. Guys like Darrell Rivas, who was a three-time All-Big East cornerback, had maybe the greatest punt return in the history of the league when he went up the sideline against West Virginia on a Thursday night. Larry Fitzgerald, best receiver in the game, still is all over the Big East record books, and he only played two seasons. Um, a guy who is destined to wear a yellow jacket in Canton, Ohio someday, Reuben Brown. Reuben, for my money, if you were going to put the very, very best offensive lineman to play in the Big East over two decades, Reuben would be at the top of the list. It's always fun in college football to take a nostalgic look back where you've been, your history, your great traditions, and certainly the Big East Football Conference has provided us you know, two decades worth of opportunities in that regard. A lot of great games and milestone moments. But as fun as it is to look back and be nostalgic, it's even more fun to look forward and anticipate greatness in the future. And we believe the Atlantic Coast Conference is going to be a great home to be able to create new memories and new opportunities and hopefully the opportunity to add to our trophy case as well.